Coming up on Fox 4 Sports Watch, the Mavs free agent offseason is in full swing. Will it end badly or really badly? Also, we'll go over the Rangers' numbers in June to see if they are still viable contenders in the American League West. And in Women's World Cup action, Team USA is on to the finals. We will preview their chances of winning a third World Cup in country history. Fox 4 Sports Watch, let's go! You are listening to Fox 4 Sports with Edward Egros and Victor Wynn. Welcome to another installment of Fox 4 Sports Watch, your podcast for Fox 4 Sports. I'm Edward Egros, your neighborhood weekend sportscaster, alongside Victor Wynn, your neighborhood sports producer. Hello again, everybody. We are off to a roaring start here for free agency concerning the Dallas Mavericks. My goodness, Uh, if the late night news of Al Farouk Amino wasn't shocking enough, and it wasn't, Tyson Chandler decided not to wait around either, so now two guys who pretty much constituted the lion's share of the Mavericks' defense from last season is now gone. This this is a good trend. (laughs) Yes, yes. What could go wrong here? So, regardless of whatever you think about how the Mavericks have done the last few years concerning the offseason, let me start with the positive real quickly, and then we'll deteriorate into nothingness. Here we go. So let's let's end this notion right here that the Mavericks have struck out every single offseason concerning the guys that they've wanted to get. They did get Chandler Parsons last year, and let's not discount that. Yes, they had to overpay for him a little bit, but I am firmly convinced that had Chandler Parsons been there for the entirety of the playoff series against the Rockets, they would have done better than five games. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Game game three, especially when there was a ton of scoring involved, had Chandler Parsons been there for just that little stretch, they probably would have had one or two more baskets at worst and then sent it to a sixth game, which would have been at home, and then you never know what was going to happen there, and then you'd have a seventh game, and then you know who knows what, what the possibilities may have been there. So I, I am convinced that Chandler Parsons is a bigger pickup than maybe we want to believe And, you know, he wasn't injury-prone to begin with. So, let's end that notion right there. So, we'll start there, say the Mavericks are capable of landing big targets. Now, that being said, it hasn't happened that often for the Mavericks, and now they're in a position where it's almost do or die in terms of picking up DeAndre Jordan. This almost has to happen for the Mavericks to salvage anything from what happened last year in terms of the insanity of Rajon Rondo, in terms of losing Tyson Chandler, in terms of losing Al Farouk Aminu as well. I mean, this was a guy who did a heck of a lot, and, you know, the true Mavericks fans really understood his value. I mean, he ranked second on the team in total rebounds per 100 possessions behind Chandler. He was third in steals and blocks per 100 possessions. And if you go by uh, basketball reference, he was the strongest defensive player in terms of overall metrics. So, a lot defensively has left. And, you know, Rondo was supposed to be a defensive point guard as well. You could argue, you know, how much did he produce as far as that was concerned. But this, you don't want the identity to change to a a pure offensive team because it it doesn't really win championships. But at the same time, it's got to come from somewhere. We look at Wesley Matthews, who is likely the top target for the Mavs right now at shooting guard. He is, you know, exactly everything that Monte Ellis isn't. You know, right. he doesn't need the ball in his hands the entire time. You know, he's a spot-up shooter. He's a really good perimeter defender. But, oh, by the way, he's coming off this really, really bad knee injury, and so there's really no guarantee there. Right. But these are gambles that the Mavericks pretty much have to take at this point because they put themselves in that particular position. Yeah, and in, in the case of Aminu, you know, you would have loved to have him back, but at the amount of money that he's getting paid right now, you can – understand the Mavs dilemma, especially with all everything else that's in limbo right now. One of the arguments against uh, signing DeAndre Jordan is his free throw pr- shooting percentage is so low. Why would you want to pick up somebody who's that paltry on the defensive line? And, and there's a simple answer to this. He does everything else really, really well. He was the leading rebounder in the entire league last year. He's go- He's been healthy. For a center, that's really hard to, to, to do because you know how beat up they get, especially in this day and age of the NBA. And we saw last year that any time there was one piece of the puzzle gone, they just didn't know how to scramble. The, the Dallas Mavericks are not good in that kind of extemporaneous kind of play. They need everybody there, and they need everybody to be 100%. And any time that didn't happen, they crashed and burned. And so you need somebody who's going to be 
very healthy all the time, and DeAndre Jordan could definitely be that guy. Something else, he was third in blocks in the le- in the year, uh, third in the league in true shooting percentage, which accounts for three-pointers more heavily. And so despite that metric that would go against him, he's still doing very well in that department. There is a lot to like about his game, and he's a lot younger than Tyson Chandler, and so that's something else to consider. And one of the main selling points that the Mavs have to offer is the fact that they can give Jordan a bigger role in the offense, something that he's been craving, something that he's been looking for. Jordan has proven that he could carry that load, especially in the spurts where Blake Griffin was injured. Jordan has proven to be more than capable of putting up double-doubles every night. We saw the reports that he really didn't like being that third wheel behind CP3 and Blake Griffin. And there's a little animosity there, too, as well with CP3. And it's really one of those things where you almost had to scratch your head, why didn't the Clippers go farther or further uh, in the the playoffs last year? I mean, that that team was pretty darn good, and the fact that they crashed and burned against the Rockets, that, that to me was, you know, just as big of a story in the playoffs as anything else. You know, if you believe in the, if you didn't believe in the Clippers' curse before, you probably should now. And this would be a perfect opportunity for Jordan, not just to, you know, play a bigger role, become a bigger face within a team, but also too, it gives him what he wants in terms of a three-year deal, have that player option for a fourth, get the money that he wants, but then leave after a short period of time, go somewhere else, and make a ton more money. It may not be the most advantageous thing for the Mavs right, you know, long term, but in the short term, it's a deal that has to get done with Dirk Nowitzki in his waning years. Well, that well negates the number one advantage that the Clippers have in terms of signing him by offering that fifth year. If Jordan just wants four years with an out after three and taking advantage of the future TV money and the TV revenue, you would think that that would point the tea leaves in the general direction towards Dallas. I mean, you don't know what a player really wants at the end of the day. I mean, they may say they want to go win a championship. They may say they want to go be the number one guy in a particular team. They may say lots of things, but at the end, there's some random, ex- you know... Yeah, in the end, this is these are agents leaking out right. certain bits of information, and it's all negotiating through the media. Exactly. And as you've seen, not just in basketball, but in other sports, sometimes it's that team that you may hear one or two murmurs about that turn out to be the absolute correct answer. I mean, you know, we've really only heard the Clippers and Mavericks in terms of DeAndre Jordan, but there could be some other random team that may have won several championships lately that may just swoop in and take The quote-unquote mystery team that uh, has become so famous on Twitter. Behind curtain number three, all of a sudden you have, I don't know, the Spurs. Okay, this leads me to this question, though, now. If, if... You swing and miss on DeAndre Jordan. Where? What is the option going forward? Roy Hibbert with the, the sign and trade. The, the sign and trade. I mean, that's pretty much the only thing you can do. I know. Uh, you Tim know McMahon they want Monte, yeah. So that, that possibility as well, and they want Monte. And I mean, that may be the only real option that you have right now. I mean, they, you know, the Pacers are willing to unload some money right now. They want to try and unload that contract. That the Mavericks may be just desperate enough to do something like that, and it's going to give him a change of scenery, which is probably something that he may want as well. Yeah. Because the Pacers have had you know a little bit of turmoil the last few years, so I mean there are lots of things to consider. Yeah, and for all his offensive deficiencies, or all the times that he's disappeared on the offensive end, he's always been a more than capable rim protector. He's always been a more than capable rebounder. Absolutely. But again, I, I think you really have to. I, I hate to say DeAndre Jordan or bust, but it pretty much feels that way. Right? Oh, it is. I mean, yeah, it, it pretty much is. Yeah, and, you know, we, we talked about some of the other statistics, but here's something that I think is even more uh, more interesting and more, you know, a, a spotlight of what he's capable of doing. Fifth in total win shares is DeAndre Jordan. Here are the names that he is behind in that list. James Harden, Chris Paul, Curry, Anthony Davis. Who? Yeah. Oh, Anthony, Anthony Davis, Davis, who, by the who, way, just signed the richest contract exactly in the right. NBA. Who probably will be the best player in the NBA uh, once LeBron starts to go downhill in a couple of years. He's not there yet, but when that happens, once he starts to age, then Anthony Davis yeah, is Yeah, that is right pretty decent company right there. Exactly. So, yeah, he's fifth behind them, and he's ahead of everybody else. I did not see LeBron on that list among, you know, a bevy of other names in terms of win shares. I mean, this is... This really is the guy that the Mavericks have to get, and if it doesn't work out, then they are in serious trouble, not just in terms of next season, but this may be Rick Carlisle's you know, rationale for leaving after there's, next there's year. A, there's a very real Dirk chance. Dirk may want to you know, retire a little bit sooner because that, that chance for a championship may have closed all the way. I mean, I hate to get so hyperbolic, but this may, may very well be 
the one thing that the Mavericks absolutely have to have to keep the band together. Well, you want to look on the bright side, though? If we miss out on DeAndre, one step closer to hashtag Start Sotnam. Start Sotnam is a movement that I think Victor or who, who started this movement exactly? Uh, Someone I, on social media. I think, we de- I think we developed this 20 minutes ago in the sports office as we were preparing for this podcast. So, yes, yeah, Sotnam Singh, the, the second round draft pick out of India, the first Indian born player to be drafted in the NBA draft. He is a little slow. Slightly lacking in athleticism. Yes. Slightly lacking in in in-game competition experience. May not have a a bevy of of basketball fundamental skills, but he's 7'2". He's 7'2", and and according to Mark Cuban, he he can shoot. And he can shoot. He can shoot against nobody. Yes. You look at his reel. Yeah, look at those highlight reels. Yeah, look at those highlight reels where he's uh, being guarded against either air or a chair. Yes. And he completely dominates both. (laughs) Oh my goodness, he dominated that chair. And oxygen, oh, it stands no chance against the (laughs) Sotnam. The Sotnam. Oh man. Yes. This is the reality of Dallas Mavericks 2015 16. This is what we're looking forward to, boys and girls. And so, yeah, if DeAndre Jordan doesn't work out. They're moving the team <laughs> <laughs> to Iceland. Yes, the Reykjavik Mavericks. Let me go uh, <laughs> cyber dust my displeasure over this <laughs> right now. Oh wait! <laughs> oh, it disappeared in ten seconds. You know what would be fun is uh, if we change topics right now because otherwise we're please. In, uh, yeah, otherwise uh, Mark Cuban will shut this thing down. Shut so, it down. So the Texas Rangers uh, had an interesting June. It certainly was not the the greatness that was May, and it certainly wasn't the sadness that was April. Yeah, somewhere sort, in sort between. Of a, sort of a, a mediocre kind of month. But keep in mind that this this was a very difficult month in terms of travel, a couple of injuries that happened out of the blue. So there are a lot of extenuating circumstances where you can point to and say, this really wasn't that bad of a month at all if you want to be pessimistic about it. And one of the things, too, is you had, during this month, a stretch of quality starts that... Were in quality start, seven innings, three earned runs or less, and you were able to do some really impressive things there. Now, the offense may not have always carried these these starting pitchers, and the bullpen may not have actually supported a lot, but at the same time, you, you have to like where the starting pitching is going. Yes, Chi-Chi Gonzalez has come back down to earth, but Colby Lewis has looked pretty solid. You, I mean, you, got, you have a lot of, you know... They're holding their own right yeah, now they're, they're against tougher there. circumstances than exactly. they have faced in the month of May. So to go over some of the Rangers' numbers in June, these are their Major League Baseball ranks, their team ranks. Uh, First in hitting, they finished 17th in runs in the month of June, 18th in hits. They were 9th in homers, but 20th in on-base percentage. Probably what you would expect after a month like this. You've got some great sluggers. You've got Mitch Moreland, who's really coming into his own. And I, I think this is a guy who has been very underrated. If you want to give a, you know, a player of the month award, Mitch Moreland may be that guy. Yeah, it's it's tough to argue against Gallardo and his epic June, sure. but Moreland would be a logical choice after that. He's just barreling everything right now. Rangers are 11 and 1 when Mitch Moreland hits a home run. I consider this a meaningful stat given that you're almost at the midway point of the season or practically the midway point of the season, not at the All-Star break, but close to it. And about a seventh of those games have pretty much been decided based upon Mitch Moreland's bat. Well, his presence has been much needed, especially after Gallo came back down to earth. You know, his strikeout percentage is what's why he's in Triple A right now. You know, he's got to work on that. And Hamilton's been gone for a while. DeShields has been gone, and so the offense Beltre really just needs... came back. Yeah, Beltre just came back, and he's still trying to find. You know, trying to gain his footing right now. Perhaps and... came sooner than you would like, but. You know, the need was there. And, and so the team was really know. just trying to find its footing throughout the entire month, especially when they're slogging through that tough stretch. But Moreland has really been a saving grace for them. Rangers pitching numbers for the month of June. Again, these are the Major League Baseball team ranks. They were 13th in earn run average, 24th in saves, 24th in saves, 10th in earned runs. They were last in strikeouts. Absolutely last in strikeouts, but 10th in batting average against. Tenth seems like a good number, but consider this. Houston is leading batting average against. And this brings me to my next point. We've talked a lot about how the Houston Astros have, they've, you know, they had that incredible start. They came back down to reality, but 
after the month of June, they are still leading the American League West. Yes, the Angels have gone on a bit of a tear at this point, almost quietly, but they're not there yet because Houston is continuing to win. At what point do we need to start taking the Astros seriously? And I feel like that time is coming up pretty soon. The Rangers are still going to be in this thing from a wild card standpoint. Just get to the All-Star break at 500, get some guys healthy, and then aim at the wild card because the Astros are going to be really, really tough to catch right now. They've got a lot of young arms. They've got a lot of uh, young talent that they may tr- they use as trading pieces. I mean, they may be in better position to pick up a Cole Hamels or someone like that than anybody else. Yeah. And, you know, he probably would want to go to what can be a more sure thing contender. George Springer is probably your rookie of the year at this point, you know, given how well that he's been playing. So there's a lot to like as far as the Astros are concerned. Then again, they have had a lot of bad luck over the years. So, you know, the Astro fan may be reserving their happiness at this point or reserving their optimism. And that makes a whole lot of sense. But just from my vantage point, they look like the team to beat right now. Yeah, and I do like the fact that this somewhat tempers the uh, Cole Hamels to Rangers talks because that's the last person they need at this point. They need It'll cost bo- too much. They, it costs too much. You know, it's not worth the hit that it would take, you know, you know from a uh, farm system level to get a guy like that. And, you know... They've hit their farm system enough the last few years, almost swinging and missing at guys who are thanks, only going to be there for a few... Right. They're only going to be there for a few months, and then that's it. And they don't do that much when they are here. And... I, I, they really can't do that again. No. They, they need to start bolstering things. And, I mean, this season has kind of been a pleasant surprise in terms of, you know, what their output has been. So maybe it's better just to treat it that way, that they're perhaps overperforming a little bit, as opposed to saying, all right, now we're real contenders. Let's oh, yeah, go for all sure. out and overspend for somebody who may absolutely decimate the franchise in the next two to three years. Yeah, for sure. Last topic, we're going to talk about the Women's World Cup. Team USA knocks <sighs> off Germany 2 to nothing Tuesday night. They will face Japan or England Sunday in Canada. And what's been so fascinating about watching Team USA is they have had one of the better defenses that we have ever seen in Women's World Cup history. They have the second longest shutout streak behind Germany, which spanned three World Cups. This is how good they've been. They They have not allowed a goal since the first match of the Women's World Cup, almost a month ago uh, at the time of our recording here. They will be a favorite regardless of the outcome of, the, of, you know, of Wednesday night's match. You know, whoever plays, whatever's going on, they're going to be the favorite here. And it, it's been impressive to watch given that they've shuffled a lot of you know, ladies around the lineup. You've got someone like Abby Wambach coming off the bench and producing big time. You've got a lot of young talent coming, coming through. And so you, you love their chances on Sunday, but at the same time, you remember what happened four years ago and didn't exactly work out. So there's still must-see TV to be oh, had yeah. here. I think what matters most is that you, you like the direction of, of, you know, Team USA soccer at this point. And, I mean, they, they did very, very well four years ago. They look to win it again this time. And it's not all about, you know, defense winning championships. You, you know, you hear the cliche a lot, but it's really been their ability to get to penalty kicks – that's had a lot to do with it. I mean, they, they've penetrated the, you know, you know, pretty much any part of the field that they've wanted in terms of you know controlling the surface. And there's a, you have to like the fact that Hope Solo, you know, even though she's one of the top goalkeepers, she really hadn't had to do very much. No, the Germans look completely discombobulated yesterday. They shanked a penalty kick, something they hadn't done in a very very long time. And now there you go, one more match to to get another World Cup. Where can you watch it again? One. I believe it will be on Fox Four. Ooh. Yes. Really? This yeah. is the first I've heard of this. We'll be on the mothership. Right here on Fox 4. I believe the <clears throat> coverage starts at 5 o'clock Central Time. Speaking so, of ratings. So if you want to help our ratings out, then uh, make sure you tune in, and we will have all the latest on Sports Sunday after that at 10 o'clock. 10 p.m. Sunday on Fox 4. on Fox 4. That's a lot of plugs in a short period of time. Well, we got to do it. Yes, we got to do it because we love our jobs, and we don't love talking about the Mavericks ruining our lives. Mm-hmm with the off-season decisions and the draft decisions over the last few years that have come back to haunt them and have caught up to them after a while. Uh, yes. Simmer. Simmer. Yes. The set is bay is not that big, so. Yeah. All right. Good talk, everybody. Gosh. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll get back to work, I guess. 
<laughs> I'm Good so times. sad. Yes. I'm so sad. All the sads. All right, so we'll uh, we'll cue up some uh, to go music here so that we can uh, I don't know cry in our iced coffees or burrito bowls, whatever we uh, decide to feast on uh, the next few minutes. And uh, thanks again so much for listening to us. We always appreciate your patronage. For Victor, I am Edward. Have a great one. On air, online, and totally mobile, this is Fox 4.